It's hard to believe that it's been over 20 years since Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web. And it's even harder to imagine buying, selling, uh, diagnosing, traveling, organizing, or friending without the web. But we've got a problem. We don't really understand the web all that well. And we understand even less well the social, economic, and political impact that the web is having around the world and countries today. We can be forgiven for that. The web's a very complex space, as you can see from this picture of the blogosphere, uh, linkages across the blogosphere. Of course, blogs are only a very small part of the web. It's very complex. As Tim has said, the web is not technology, but it's humanity connected by technology. And we now have two billion human beings connected to the web, more probably some other species as well. And we have probably over a trillion web pages out there all linked together. And that's more web pages than there are neurons in the human brain, especially in my brain. So, um, how can we possibly hope to make the web a better place for more people until we really understand the web and how it's impacting country, countries around the world? Where is the web having a very positive impact on ed education, on health, on governance and life? What are the conditions that exist in those countries that allow it to be a positive impact? What challenges exist in countries where the web's impact is lagging? And what can we do about those challenges? And how can we fix the web itself to make it more accessible and useful for people? The um, World Wide Web Index is something that Web Foundation is creating in order to try to answer some of those questions. It's being compiled by a, a number of organizations around the world. We're taking the data and creating this index in a way that we hope will make the web more understandable and more useful and can evolve in a more responsible way. In the end, the Web Index will be an annual ranking of countries based on the state and impact of the web. But in order to be a success, the index must be much more than just a ranking. It must motivate research into the cause and effect of conditions in countries and the impact of the web, and hopefully will motivate action. It will motivate investments and new policies that will make the web a more empowering force for people in those countries. So, well, what is the Web Index? There's about 60 different data sets, or I'm sorry, 70 different data sets that are going into the Web Index, compiled by the Web Foundation and a number of organizations around the world. And uh, this shows what the index will look like, just based on 13 countries for which we have already gathered pretty much of the data. Um, this is very preliminary stuff at this point. In this example, the USA is ranked number one, Ghana is ranked number 13, and so on. But even the simple example begs a number of questions. For example, why aren't Japan and Italy ranked higher? And what kinds of conditions are relegating the African countries toward the bottom of the ranking? So let's look a little bit more detail at the raw data sets going into the index, as well as looking at uh, some of the particular countries and their components of the index. So not surprisingly, this is a, this is a plot of the uh, percentage of web users in countries around the world. This is one of the 70 data sets going into the index. Not surprisingly, the uh, de developed countries have a higher percentage of, of web users. Um, one thing that just does surprise many people is across the world, only about 30% of the people in the world are using the web now. It's a tool that you are all using all the time. And we hope that somehow the index can stimulate these numbers to rise, especially in places like Africa, where the percentages of users are below 10% in general. So let's look at a particular, a couple um, individual countries and look a little bit deeper what goes into the web index. I find it helpful to look at these spider diagrams. Let's call them the spider webs. And uh, I, there's different components that feed into the index, including uh, communications and institutional infrastructure. So this institutional infrastructure includes things like laws and education. There's the content that's available in a country, as well as its use. And then finally, the social, economic, and political impact of the web in that country. And this picture also shows a very interesting cycle, because you need some basic infrastructure in order for the web to be used and for people to create content on it and for there order to be impact. But of course, as the impact of the web grows, you would expect to be a greater demand for more content and better infrastructure and so on. All these components roll up into the web index at the top of this plot, and that's the, what you saw plotted on the bar graph earlier. Now let's take a trip to some other countries. Let's go to Egypt, to Italy, and Ghana. Let's start with Italy first. Um, and all these plots, you're going to see the US's, um, I'm sorry, you'll see the US's uh, web infrastructure um, uh, numbers plotted on the outside here. So we see that, in this case, Italy has a, kind of a, a leaning tower of Pisa shape. It's got a fairly high communications infrastructure based on what we know about the availability, quality, and cost of things like computers, mobile phones, and, and, uh, and their use in that country. Interestingly enough, the in institutional infrastructure is low, and one of the things that feeds into that has to do with the burden of government regulation, which tends to be relatively high in Italy. So that's quite interesting. So one of the kinds of research projects I would hope would be motivated by a plot like this would be looking to see to what extent 
this burden of government regulation might be deterring the creation of new web enterprises, new accessible content, and, and of economic and political impact in Italy. Going to Egypt, it has uh, uh, one of the highest communications infrastructure levels in Africa, but still quite a bit below the U.S. Content in Arabic languages is notoriously sparse. But of the impact measures on the uh, upper left-hand side, the political impact is quite large. And this came out as a result of expert surveys that we've done in Egypt that suggest that, of course, and not surprisingly, the web has been important to political mobilization as well as to uh, election campaigning. And of course, the events of the Arab Spring attest to that. Finally, Ghana. Ghana had the, was the lowest ranked of the countries in our pilot index, has the lowest level of communications infrastructure in the country. Content in local languages is practically non-existent. One of the things that the Web Foundation is doing in Ghana and a number of other countries is creating mobile entrepreneurship laboratories that we hope will stimulate Ghanaian genius in the form of new applications that will create new content and hopefully have a positive impact in countries like Ghana and around the world. So to conclude, I hope you got a, a taste for what the Web Index is going to look like when it's published in its entirety in, uh, in June of this year. Um, I'm kind of excited about it. This, uh, I saw these data for the first time two weeks ago, but already at least there's a, a sense that we're on the right track and that these results are making sense and there's a potential for this in, uh, index to do some good. It'll be an open data effort, so when the index is published, uh, all the raw, raw data, the results, will be available for you to play with and we'll be glad to engage the community in a dialogue to try to make this index better and more valuable over time. But the main thing is in the end that this index has some ability to improve the web, improve its accessibility and power to make life better for more people around the world. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.